Um, good evening, everybody who is here physically, including those who are watching us virtually. And we want to thank you so much for trusting us and uh, coming to listen and also tuning in to be able to be informed. Uh, it's a privilege to be here once again this evening. And I want to trust that God is going to lead us and we are going to start from where we were yesterday. We were looking at the types of mental disorders and we are making real that uh, indeed there are disorders of the mind. And I think you would agree with me that uh, it's not a myth, but it is true that there are those ones. And uh, having looked at quite a number of yesterday, include the mood disorders, anxiety, the psychotic uh, uh, somatoform, the eating disorders, and we were really wanted, we wanted to dive a bit deeper in the personality disorders, and I have a reason why I chose at least to expound on that, because sometimes it doesn't really look like it's a problem, but indeed it's a problem. Personal disorders, I said, I, I think as I, I described yesterday, uh, is a... Um, these are the pervasive, enduring patterns of thinking, perceiving, reacting, and relating. If you follow carefully, these are areas where you are not going to diagnose by maybe taking an extra, as I've always said. Remember, it is the thinking, what we talked about, the mind, how you perceive things and react and relate. And when you talk about pervasive, it means it's out of the norm. And that is why they become significant. Because we know all of us think, all of us perceive, all of us relate, and of course all of us react to some situation, environment, to people and everything. But we are talking about a, a situation where now this particular kind of behavior, rather uh, 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 elements, are pervasive, that, that they are out of the norm. And that you call them pervasive because they are going to cause significant distress or functional impairment. That is when now you talk about a disorder, becomes a personal disorder. As we grow, these particular patterns could be existing, but they are at subnormal, they are at a level that they are not causing a problem. And we refer them as a trade. You know, something you are carrying, it is not bothering you. Yes, you might think negatively here and there, perceive and relate and react, but it is not a very important thing at that time, especially as we grow old. And then it reaches a point where now it is causing significant distress or functional impairment. Uh, they are usually caused by different, by a combination of genetic and environmental factors, as I mentioned yesterday. And uh, we note that they become less severe as you grow old. So for those of us and, uh, who have joined maybe senior citizens, maybe it was very bad, things are now you are managing. No wonder then sometimes families go through a hell and back. But as people grow, then they say, I think nowadays, so now things are not so bad. Remember, it could have been a personality disorder now that has, is coming down because of age. I think I mentioned yesterday that it's important we are talking about it because of the statistics. We say that in a general population, around 9% of the general population have these problems. And therefore, 9% can be anybody, including you and me. But then it even becomes worse as you look at now those people who are exhibiting uh, mental health issues, mental health disorders that we have just looked at, that among us people with anxiety disorder, you will find that 50% are actually having problem with personality disorders. And therefore, it is very important that we actually uh, address this and at least get to understand. Remember that I'm not here to make psychiatrist or mental health specialist, but you are just here to actually be aware, accept, and take action because we were told by our speaker 
that my people perish for what? For lack of knowledge. And indeed, some families have really broken up. There are some children, even as we speak, are not in good terms with their parents and even within their siblings just because of maybe something like the personal disorder that we don't understand that it exists. I also mentioned that there is no clear distinction in terms of sex, socioeconomic status, race, etc. Meaning, anybody can, be, can suffer from personal disorder, isn't it? And I want to say that your profession, even if you are a doctor like me, does not cushion, does not remove. The classroom does not remove that trade which you are carrying, and therefore you are cushioned from a personal disorder. So it is there. Uh, there is also no much difference between male and female. But a few that I will be looking at, like the one we call antisocial personal disorder, you find that the males are more affected than female. I'm not saying anything. I've called it antisocial. Eh? So I've not said anything. It is you get it more in males in a ratio of three to one. But ladies don't think that you are better. One called borderline, which I'll be giving the characteristics, we also dominate there where the ratio is three to one. But generally, majority, you cannot, there's no much difference. It's important to note this because it is what makes us and it's what is going to determine even the families as we look forward to having hope in our families. It is very important to note this because it has been demonstrated that actually the direct health costs of, uh, uh, of lost productivity associated with the amount that is used in uh, managing this is higher than even the, what we are calling down there, uh, the other mental health disorders. Especially when you are looking at uh, borderline, which I said is more in what? Women. And also there is another one called OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, personality disorder. So this one, actually they are very, very significant. The, the cost in terms of productivity and, 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 and the wasted time and of course the actual cost of healthcare is higher than costs of major depressive disorders and even generalized anxiety disorders. Uh, I just want to uh, say that in this personal disorder, there are actually 10 in total, but we look at them because of their characteristics. They have got three groups, three clusters. They are not there, don't look at those ones because they are not put there. Just get what I'm saying. The first cl cluster uh, is called, we have three types where we have the paranoid, and this is a term that is actually used. I hope you know what it means when you say that somebody is very paranoid. But sometimes you use it so loosely that hey, his paranoid is always you know, anxious, it is not settled. That is not what it means. Paranoid, there is this one, it's a characteristic of mistrust and what? And suspicion. <laughs> Does it, is it ringing a bell? There are people in families that they don't trust you no matter how much you want to really make them, you know, trust you. Please don't, don't be annoyed because sometimes they could be having these trades. So in paranoid personality disorders, the characteristic is mistrust and suspicion. People who will never be settled, they are always suspicious. Either you are not using money well, either you are not showing them everything, you are not, maybe you are doing other things out there, and many of those, of course, we know that uh, things happen and therefore one's beaten, twice shy, but you need to see that there's a level or that you will be able to have a trust. These people may not have that. There's another one in this class called schizoid, which is actually like schizophrenia. You remember these are, uh, these are uh, disorders which have got um, uh, characteristics of uh, in out of touch with the reality. In this particular group, there are people who are always disinterested. No matter how excited, no matter what you bring, Hello, in the family, sometimes we are so excited, we want to be given flowers, you bring flowers, nothing excites this person. Please accept that there could be a problem if they cannot be excited with whatever, however much you try. For ladies, sometimes we really want to excite somebody in terms of cooking and everything, but still they are not appreciating. 
they are disinterested in most of the time with whatever it is. They are, and then there's another type one we call schizotypal. They are eccentric ideas and the behavior that sometimes we refer as weird. You know, when you hear of somebody having weird uh, uh, behaviors is whatever you expect. For example, if you are in a, in a, in a setting where you are talking about good things and everybody's excited, the person is wondering why you are excited. For them, there's nothing to excite them. You see, it would behave, you know, it's weird because if everybody is really appreciating what is going around, but the person is so indifferent and is not interested, is on, you know, many at times we look at them and we label them, they are very selfish. Nothing, they, want, they don't want to participate. They are so, uh, they are so much onto themselves. Please understand that this is a type of personality disorder that these people may have. Now, this, there's a group that is characterized by dramatic appearance, emotional and erratic, uh, erratic behavior, and they are unpredictable. Have you ever come across somebody who you are just maybe conversing and things are just calm, and all of a sudden the person is just becomes and is wearing and is shouting and you are like, wow, very dramatic in behavior. And you wonder, what really is causing you to do this? This group of personal disorders have got this, you know? They, they usually uh, appear very emotional. If it is crying, they can really cry and you wonder, what is, what is it? You, even you are trying to cry, but there will be no tears. But for them, the tears are real. Hello? Very dramatic. Not because they have decided to do that, but there's something inside that makes them that way. These are the people many a times are very unpredictable. You may not know what is their next move. And you know, when somebody is unpredictable, sometimes we even wonder, can I trust you, even if it is with children? Can I? Because you see, when they are dramatic, they can do anything. One of the examples here is the antisocial. And this is the one I said is common with. Yes. Mostly they are social irresponsibility. They are disorganized, disoriented in many other times, dissentiful, and they are manipulative for personal gain. I'm not saying that that's all what, is, what men are, but men at times have discussed, and when we have seminars with, me, with women, they say, no, 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 no. I think my husband is so selfish. He's nothing but manipulative. I hope they understand what it means to be manipulative and that in little sense. But then, in this particular group of antisocial, or social, uh, personal disorders called antisocial, that is what characterizes them. And remember, these are people who don't care what you are going to think, what you are going to feel, as long as they are comfortable. So they will do anything for their personal gains. They will even cause you to go for loans when you, are, you know very well that you are not, but because sometimes they talk nicely. And there have come many, many cases where you actually sit back and say, how did you make such a decision? And then they tell me, Dr. Ali, where watch you? You don't know the kind of person I am with. It can be either way. It doesn't mean that the women cannot also be manipulative. So remember, at the back of your mind, please find out if there is an element of that antisocial personal disorder. There's another one called borderline, which I talked that is common in women. This one is not a good one. Regardless of where you are and whatever you've been given, you have got an inner emptiness. These are guys that are difficult to actually satisfy. Regardless of what you give, they will still always feel empty inside. And of course, there is a way that emptiness is shown. They will always be complaining. They will be always saying, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I work very, very hard, but they have nothing to show about. I am like this. You know, even somebody who has really gone and you can admire the level of education, they still feel very deficient. Emptiness, in, in inner emptiness. They are usually suffer unstable relationships. And therefore, 
if you dated so many times and you didn't get it right, please remember there could have been something that you missed out. And if you are still dating and you find that things are not working, please re-examine and go for maybe a, a professional a examination. So you find that in this kind of borderline, you know, you are border, what is the borderline? You are almost going out completely off the calf, but you are hanging in there, but then most of the time you exhibit this thing of, you know, that emptiness, that uh, missing the goal, that, you know, feeling that you have not really, you are not where you are supposed to be. There's another one in this group called histrionic, which is uh, uh, characterized by attention seeking and excessive emotionality. Hello, you know I've seen some people smiling, attention seeking. Yes, sometimes we may find ourselves there, but please don't do it too much. But when you find somebody is doing too much, just think that it could be something that is in, in, inherent in him. Excessive emotionality. You know, every time nothing really is going to, I mean, make sense to you. Every time you are so emotional, somebody talking something small. And I was in a clinic this morning, and then, the, 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 you know, the lady comes and like, you know what? I was only asking what is normal to this girl. And you know, she just fell down. You know that she convulses when things are so, not so well. Then the mother asks me, Doctor, am I not supposed to say everything, anything as a mother? And I smile, I say, excuse me. You are allowed to say, but to extend that you need to understand that she's also going through, a, she has a problem. Are we together? You know, this is a place where you need to understand when somebody does something out of proportion, you need to sit back and, and actually think, is it okay? And if it is going to be done many times, then for sure they need help. And that is why you are seated here and you are listening that you would actually sit back and say, could it be that there's a problem? Could it be a personality disorder? And so that you can lead the people to the right place. The third one, which every person talk about, the fourth one in this group, the so-called narcissistic. I don't know whether people understand what a narcissist is. self grandiose Need for admiration and lack of empathy. Sure? I'm told that I have only three minutes. This is one of the personal disorders that actually you find very common and many people are not understood. I remember one patient and the parents were like, the guy has been in jail many times. It combines and social, you cannot... And you see, they are only happy when you, you are sad. They see you smiling, it raises a lot of anxiety in them and they will look for something to make sure that you are not feeling well. The last one is about avoidant and dependent and this one, avoidant, uh, you find that they feel actually they are rejected in all ways, especially if children uh, suffer from rejection, they are likely to end up with the this kind of personal disorders. Time is not on our side, but then I want to say this. It is possible for you to check your personality, not because you want to quit the relationship with somebody who has it, but knowing is better. That is what we are being told about the knowledge. Knowing is easier, and there is even an old app which talks about, which assesses personality disorders, and you are either an introvert, extrovert, the way you interact with people, the way you interact with the, you make decisions, the way you interact with the environment. And indeed, I hope that at the end of it all, we'll be able to know. And please, I recommend that we check so that you know the kind of person you are dealing with because it will reduce your anxiety and pain. May God bless you.